we do have serious contamination issues. So we have a, a conveyor belt at the front end of our composting system where there's somebody sorting off the plastics. And um, this position, this job right here was actually featured on uh, World's Dirtiest Jobs, that show, if any of you are familiar with that. Um, so w this is where one of the problem arises. How does that sorter on that line know what's compostable or non-compostable? At this point, the conveyors were moving so fast and there's so much um, grit in there, they're just pulling off anything that they see that looks near um, like plastic, similar to plastic. We, the composting system, of course, is ground up and it reaches to about 140 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's the reason why we're able to take meat, bones, and other compostable pr plastics. A lot of people say, well, can this stuff break down in your backyard? Not so much because we're reaching higher temperatures than a backyard compost would because of the, the volume of material we're collecting. So within 45 days, the, so I didn't talk too much about the certification yet, and I think I have some slides on that. But um, the, com the compostable bags that we are accepting and the compostable plastics are BPI certified. That's the certification that we approve. We do not approve any other certifications out there, only that one. Um, it, it's the ASTM D6400 test for compostability, if anybody cares to know. But um, that's, that's the standard that we accept at that composting facility. So more recently, the um, Let's see if I have a picture. It's a little bit out of order. I think I took it out. I'm sorry. Um, the, our compost can be used on organic farms, and that's something we're very proud of, and we want to continue to make our compost available to organic farmers. It's certified by OMRI, Organics Materials Research Institute. However, more recently, the organics uh, certification has been uh, raising kind of a red flag around these compostable pl plastics. They're saying, we're, we're not sure if we really want these things in our compost. And because of that, um, the PLA industry, uh, it, along with some of their partners, is uh, filing a petition. So that's, and um, Steve will talk a little bit about that, but because that's happening, we're having to split our compost into two separate piles. We now have a Organics Materials Research Institute certified compost, and we have a non-certified compost. And the non-certified compost is the one that's accepted, acceptable for the uh, compostable plastics. So it, it creates some complexity around that. And we're keeping our fingers crossed that they will eventually be accepted in the, um, the OMRI certification. We uh, use our compost, um, like I said, on uh, organic farms, vineyards, nursery. It's very, there's a very high demand. A lot of people ask us, you know, are you able to sell this? Does, you, does it just pile up? There is a, a considerable demand because we keep the standard so high, the quality so high. So it's very important for us to keep that quality up. Um, as you all know in this room, I just have to le le keep the slide in here, but um, you know, organics is one of those things that is for forever forgotten. When we talk about recycling, we're always usually going to plastics. I'm a huge proponent of organics. We need to look at organics in our waste stream, and the reason being is that the carbon loop is so much smaller when we go after organics. We can collect organics locally, we can create um, nutrients for our soils locally and keep it in our backyards and grow healthy food that doesn't need petroleum-based fertilizers, pesticides, all these things that are making us ill, as everybody knows. So I love composting for that reason. The carbon loop is so much smaller. Somebody was talking about transportation. This is the smallest transportation loop that there is. So um, let's, let's continue to capture our organics wherever we can. So talking about compostable plastics, um, I just put this slide up here just to let you know um, how hard it is for the public to recognize these products. Some of these products are recyclable plastic in our system, and some of them are compostable plastics in our system. If the user, the public, doesn't recognize these, how is our hauler, how is the person picking up the material going to recognize this as, as compostable or plastic? It's very unclear. Here's more. Um, biodegradable is another misleading label. Somebody mentioned that earlier. It does not have any merit. Um, let's see, things are a little out of order here. 
Um, I work very closely with large events. That's Gay Pride, for example, at San Francisco. We, we have half a million people come into our city, and we work very closely with you know, Coors and other beer distributors to get the cups to be compostable. So uh, what's great about co compostable plastics is I can collect almost everything from an event can be compostable if it's served on compostable flatware. Um, or I'm sorry, it's compostable food service ware. Um, but labeling is still an issue, and we've produced uh, stickers over the years, and we actually make people, that guy with the mohawk actually is wearing a sticker that says your cup is compostable at this event, so that people are putting this in the composting container as opposed to the recycling container. So paramount that we have proper labeling. This is some great labeling. Um, folks in my department, um, Department of the Environment in San Francisco, Jack Macy, working closely um, with the industry to standardize labeling on the cups. We need a standard label that is universally recognized and the green stripe is where it's at for the cups. Uh, utensils, hugely problematic. I'll just tell a quick story. Uh, Whole Foods, as you guys are probably aware of, natural food store, huge in the US, um, very popular. Uh, they wanted to do the right thing. They bought taterware, and hopefully taterware is not in the room right now. Is taterware in the room? <laughs> okay, good. Well, taterware, they purchased ta uh, taterware, which was supposed supposedly compostable uh, utensil. It turned out it was absolutely not compostable. It was, it was not breaking down in our system, and uh, we had to go back and educate Whole Foods that please, you know, purchase BPI certified compostable products so they will break down in our system, and since then, they have switched over, but it, there's just so much misleading uh, materials out there, new products coming out of China that are not following the standardized um, labeling. Very confusing. Um, I think somebody's going to talk a little bit about, uh, well, biota bottles. There's some water bottles out on the market that are made out of PLA. Very confusing. They should be composted, not recycled, but the public. What, what are they going to do with this? I, if, I, if that was me and I wasn't in this industry, I'd put it in the recycling bin. But those, those biota bottles were actually designed to be composted. Plant bottle, there's another um, that was mentioned earlier, um, another type of bottle out on the market. Once people in San Francisco see the word plant bottle, they're going to want to compost that. And that is actually designed to be recycled. And was that correct? Yes, OK. Um, in California, I'm going to quickly wrap up here. Um, we are working to uh, standardize, like I said, the labeling of the word compostable. It is now law that if there's a product labeled compostable, that means it has to pass that ASTM D6400 test. So the words, it's now illegal to label your products degradable, oxydegradable, biodegradable. That is now no longer has merit. And there are pressing charges against companies that are doing false labeling, but it's you know a huge uphill battle. I mean, there's a lot of products and um, takes a lot of time in the courts to uh, move that along. I talked about that. Um. Um, last thing I was just going to end on is, you know, the future for organics is going to be anaerobic digestion. We're moving in that direction. So I just want to pose that question to the crowd or, you know, just as a, a thought in the back of everybody's mind. What, what are we going to do with compostable products and anaerobic digestion? How are, how are those going to work together? What is that going to look like? Because I really truly believe we're going to, the composters are all going to move to digesters eventually, and we're still going to be composting, but what is that going to look like? Because right now, um, the, the organics are taken out of bags before they are put in the digester, so there's really no value in the compostable material for a digester. So, question mark. <laughs> and um, so, I want to close here with um, just a few points. Uh, labeling and education is key on these products. I still think their uh, compostable products are a huge tool in us uh, getting to zero waste. They're, they're part of the problem solving, but they're not going to solve all of our issues. And uh, should we be promoting compostable products if they don't have a composting outlet? And um, that's something we're going to discuss in the panel today. So um, thank you.